Hey guys, welcome back on my channel. Today I have another exciting product review, uh, an audio interface product review for you guys. And to be precise, I'm going to look at the Behringer, I hope I pronounce this right, Euphoria UMC22 USB audio interface with a microphone input, instrument input, headphone output. And at the back, maybe you can see this here, it also has outputs for studio speakers and the 80, 48 volt phantom power. Uh, so yeah guys, that was really a mouthful for a foreigner whose uh, native language isn't English. But in any case, I am super excited to uh, show this uh, audio interface. It's a really budget friendly entry level audio interface. And what we're gonna do, um, as you can see right now, we're in the introductory part. Uh, in part two, we're gonna look at the audio interface, a little bit of a close-up shots in the in part two is the unboxing part, where what I usually do is I show you a little bit of the build quality, what's inside the package, cabling, um, the quality of the case and stuff like that. In part three, which is probably the most uh, interesting, I'm gonna do a sound test for you. Um, we're gonna do a listening test of various microphones and I have a dynamic microphone here, which we're gonna take and plug into the audio interface and uh, besides testing a dynamic microphone, we also can plug in one of the more sensitive condenser microphones uh, with the 48 and switch on the 48 volt uh, phantom power. So we'll do a little bit uh, AB uh, testing so you get an idea of how the audio interface performs with these two types of microphones. And yeah, then I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience using this audio interface and what kind of settings you can pick inside your computer. And then in the last part, part four, we're going to do a quick uh, summary and conclusion. So guys, uh, that's about it for the introduction. Uh, let's get rolling with the unboxing. Uh, so guys, then let's have a quick look at the interface itself. Um, like I said, the packaging is kind of fairly nice. Uh, let's see where we can open this right here. We maybe turn this around. You can so that you can see this better. So we get a nice bearing a Behringer sticker um, manual, and obviously the interface itself. It's uh, nicely protected with this styrofoam. I think that's how you call it packaging. So let's quickly take this out. And uh, there's also some moisture absorbent ma uh, material here, which obviously keeps it well protected. And then uh, as you can see, this is really a real nice metal casing. And uh, I really like the build quality. Uh, it looks very, very nice and stylish in a black design. Uh, these fader knobs feel uh, really good as well as this monitor button. So I'm really excited to see how the sound quality of this is. Um, here, I already told you, those are the TRS uh, outputs. If, in case you have studio monitors and the device is completely powered via a USB cable, which obviously we can find uh, at, on the side here. So let's quickly take this out. This is a very standard uh, USB 2.0 cable and with that we are going to connect the interface to the computer here we'll in a second um, as you see it's a it's a very compact unit and uh, yeah if you want to uncluttered desk and you don't want to have this kind of setup with the extra preamp that I usually have then this is probably absolutely sufficient so we're gonna test this with two different microphones and I'm also gonna test the headphone output output uh, listen to the device uh, for a couple of days and I'm also going to show you in a second the software settings that which with, with which you can influence the quality of your recording. So why don't we just jump to part two uh, to, the, to the next part where we do the sound test. So guys welcome back right now we jump to the sound test of the Behringer UMC22 uh, audio interface and, and as you can see here I connected a dynamic microphone uh, via XLR cable to the USB audio interface. And I had to turn the uh, gain knob uh, up pretty high, but I think that's uh, somewhat normal. The dynamic microphones usually aren't as sensitive uh, compared to condenser microphones because dynamic microphones, they don't use the 48 volt phantom power. 
And yeah, again, right now I'm testing with the Shure SM58, uh, the microphone that I usually like to test my uh, audio interfaces with or compare against different mics. And uh, that should have given you a uh, first impression of how this audio interface sounds. And like promised, I wanted to test two microphones uh, with the audio interface. Now we're gonna switch from a dynamic microphone over to a condenser microphone. And for this, uh, I'm just gonna disconnect the mic real quick and turn on the phantom power, and then I'll be right back. So let's test the condenser microphone. So guys, so right now I switched over to a condenser microphone. As you can see here on the audio interface, a second light came on. That's to indicate that the phantom power is turned on. And right now I'm testing the USB interface with uh, the Behringer C1 Studio Condenser Microphone. And uh, yeah, I mean, you should uh, hear a noticeable, somewhat noticeable this, this difference in the way that my voice sounds because uh, different microphones can uh, give your uh, voice a different uh, sound characteristic. And uh, yeah, personally, I prefer the dynamic microphones because condenser microphones usually are a little bit more sensitive and pick up room acoustics or no more noise from the environment. So I like this uh, canceling out ability of these uh, other dynamic microphones, but that's a per personal preference. If you have a good room acoustics or you want a microphone that's more sensitive, then obviously uh, condenser microphones are a great alternative as well. So uh, with that, that concludes the microphone testing part of the comparing these two microphones with the Behringer UMC22. And next I'm gonna jump into the computer and show you some of the uh, options that you can select when recording audio with that interface because that can obviously also have uh, possible impacts on your sound recording quality. And then in the last part, I'm gonna give you a quick uh, summary what I found in my listening tests because I also use the microphone quite a bit for listening to music and I'm gonna share my uh, insights there with you. So uh, let's jump into the computer and show you the recording settings. So guys, uh, now finally I jumped into the computer and um, I'm quickly gonna walk you through the settings that you can pick when recording audio with the Behringer Euphoria UMC22. And uh, if you're on Windows, uh, no problem. Uh, on under Windows, it's kind of the same thing. I tested it under both operating systems. I actually compared it, um, but for the screen recording purposes, I'm going to do it on the Mac right now. And uh, every time uh, I connected this interface, uh, uh, both under Windows 10 and under uh, Mac OS, um, it detected it automatically as a USB, it says USB audio codec and you can see, so it seems to be some automatic driver that comes with your system. I think on the Windows I had to reboot, but uh, here under these uh, general settings, there's not much to see. So that's why I recommend you, uh, in case you're on a Mac, you just go to applications and uh, to utilities. Um, basically, Uh, I'm not sure whether you hear that, but that was the EMS driving uh, uh, across my, down my road. Um, uh, basically on the Windows, it's kind of like the same when you uh, want to change the audio settings. Uh, in case of Mac, it's the audio MIDI settings and you open this up. And basically what it offers you is uh, to pick the bit rate and the kilohertz. Right now you see the built-in sound card. My built-in sound card of my Mac supports 24 bits and uh, even goes up to 96 kilohertz. Uh, with the Behringer, that's uh, one downside. Um, let's uh, quickly pick the Behringer. Uh, as you can see here, you don't have that much choice. The Behringer, the affordable budget Behringers, they don't seem to, they only seem to support 16 bits. So if you're looking for a 24-bit interface, keep that in mind. But uh, from my testing, um, and as you guys hear it in the sound recording, uh, even with 16 bits, you can get really nice results. Uh, and uh, you have 16 bits at 48 kilohertz. So, uh, and uh, I can quickly connect my old FireWire interface because even that, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, supports 24 bit. And the funny thing is with my old FireWire interface, I cannot even switch off the 24 bit. It's a standard 24 bit. 
no matter what I choose. So um, you can change it, which I think is kind of like smart. I think this old interface that I have uh, is kind of like literally old school. You can change the volume, you can change the bit. The only thing you can change is the hertz. So um, that's with regard to the recording settings. I just keep the bit limitation in mind. And then one interesting thing that I noticed uh, while I was listening to music uh, quite a bit on the system, um, let me show you real quick. Uh, was that um, obviously I connect, I don't have studio speakers, I just have the normal desktop speakers. So I connect the, my desktop speakers via the headphone output. And then uh, obviously you can turn up the headphone output here. They are, uh, it's really nicely made. I really love this metal casing. But uh, I turn this up and listen to some music. And while I was doing this, I also simultaneously, let's quickly minimize this right here. So um, you can on the Mac keyboard, you can regulate the uh, volume of these two buttons right here. Uh, usually my volume is always turned up all the way and then I regulate it here But I had it both on the system turn up all the way and here on the output and for some reason uh, I listen to the music and I only have to turn the speakers very little and it sounded a little bit distorted especially uh, I was listening to one of these tracks that was had, had really a lot of bass and that uh, created a, a certain degree of distortion and I compared this and on the windows it didn't seem nearly as much so uh, I recommend uh, if you're using the headphone output uh, don't turn up the system volume all the way and don't turn up the headphone output all the way maybe just put it on the three o'clock position and you should be fine on the windows I really felt um, almost as if the output volume uh, the, sorry that was out of focus uh, as if the output volume on Windows in the driver is not nearly as high as on the Mac. So that could be also a little bit of a driver issue and not necessarily uh, driver issue with the Mac and not necessarily have to do with the interface. Uh, only thing I want to point out, just uh, do a test listen, uh, whether it uh, distorts the signal if you turn it all the way up, because uh, I tried uh, to listen to different songs and particularly the one song that has a lot of bass, uh, punchy bass. Uh, there it was audible other songs you might not even notice it that much so uh, yeah check this out otherwise i really like the interface and as you have clearly seen for recording audio it works very very nicely uh, and there's my old fireware interface so guys that uh, concludes the review of the behringer umc 22 usb audio interface uh, let's jump to the last part the summary and conclusion part so guys, right now we did jump to part four, the summary and conclusion part, and maybe as you can see, a couple of days have passed and I had the opportunity to really test this Behringer UMC22 uh, USB audio interface uh, in depth. And yeah guys, just to do a quick recap, uh, first I introduced the project, then in part two I showed you that you can use this interface to connect your studio monitors. It has, uh, it's completely powered via USB. It has a 48 volt phantom power for using condenser microphones. And basically that's what we did in part three in the sound test part. Uh, I showed you a dynamic microphone and I compared it against a condenser microphone. And we did a listening test uh, of the preamp that's built in, in this use, into this USB audio interface. And I also showed you some of the recording settings that you can select uh, both under uh, Mac and Windows that, that it, I told you that the interface has a, is a 16-bit interface. So it's not 24, but that's to be expected because it's a budget interface. And I also pointed out to you that I found that it, uh, if you turn the volume knob all the way up, uh, in my case, I tested my speakers with this headphone output, the sound, at least under Mac, uh, sounded somewhat distorted, but I would uh, really speculate at this point that it simply has to do with the driver on the Mac. Under Mac, the driver is more, uh, the volume is turned uh, up higher than on the Windows because on the Windows, uh, I didn't notice this issue nearly as much. So if you're under Mac, uh, please pay attention to that. Otherwise, uh, the interface works great. Uh, as you have seen, especially the recording part, the sound quality was uh, fairly nice. Uh, and guys, that's, uh, that's about it. You have seen uh, all the things that I could find with this interface. Uh, I see you as a subscriber on my channel and in my next uh, video I have a bunch of other useful audio equipment to, uh, uh, 
reviews and tutorials on my channel. I can quickly show this to you here. You can find other condenser microphones and other uh, audio interfaces, uh, some really useful uh, resources on lavalier microphones. So I encourage you to check those out as well. I see you in the next video and as a subscriber. Guys, all the best to you, take care. And yeah, because you watched this uh, product review slash tutorial of the Behringer UMC22, you might also be interested in watching the video of the Yamaha AG3, which I reviewed recently. And it's really surprising how many people have already subscribed to my channel uh, because of the useful uh, product reviews and tutorials that I provide here for you guys. Um, you can subscribe right now as well. I see you in the next video and maybe even in one of my online courses. All the best to you. Take care.